my analysis of the Kamala Harris CNN interview. First of all, Kamala, I really wanted to extend my congratulations to you for taking over for Joe, you know? In one of my older videos on my channel, I clapped for, you know, Elon Musk and how he was, you know, really taking a big step by trying to be Jamie Dimon's lover and trying to really seek forgiveness. And for you, Kamala, I'm going to clap for you right now. You're doing a noble thing, Kamala. You're trying to change the whole country and you're trying to make it a socialist dip hole. You know, I'm just saying dip hole because I don't want to, you know, I want, I want to get some money eventually from YouTube. So I got to keep it PG on here. But you know, Kamala, why in the world did you have that old man sit right next to you and give the interview? All of your voters and you, you guys all want to be strong, independent, you know, black women, women of whatever color, you know, why do you guys have to sit with a man, you know, watch, forge your own path, you know, do your own type of thing, you know, Kamala, the answers that you gave were comical. You were talking about how there were all over more than 10 million jobs that were lost as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Like obviously Kamala, big brain, smarty, smarty pants. Obviously there's gonna be some type of, you know, loss of jobs or economic slowdown when you have some virus that is transmitting itself at an unprecedented type of rate and nobody actually knows how to stop anything. But you Kamala, you try to bring your big thinking cap into everything like how you say that, how, you know, Black people don't know how to, you know, you agree with like jokes about Joe Biden says like, you know, if you don't vote for him, you're not black, you know, or black people don't know how to use a computer or you talk about like how younger people in my type of age demographic are stupid and all this type of stuff like Kamala. Why do you all, why do you always trip out and try to say like we're stupid when we were, you know, when we're in this age, age and time of our life, when you were doing, what were you, what were you doing when you were our age, you were slipping around San Francisco and you're just trying to always get like a bunch of, you know, a bunch of handouts, you know, that's what you're doing, Kamala, you was Mrs. Handout and you know, you're with that other man on the carpet, like what was his name, that other man who was like, you know, he had you and the other woman on the side, you know, and you guys were all like talking and laughing like you're his side pieces. You know, it's funny how far you've came in life, Kamala. You know, you rose up through, you know, the poverty and the ashes of being uh, wherever you're born. I don't know where you're born. You said, you know, maybe you're born like, I don't know, you know, you're Indian, you're not black. But the thing is that, you know, you say all these things about like how you're going to change the economy and you're going to lower the price and everything. You're not going to lower anything, Kamala. You know, to be honest, what are you going to change? Nothing. You're just going to do all the same things. You were the border star and you even said in that interview, do not come, do not come. You said that with reference to the migrants making the dangerous trek up to the border. And you know what, Kamala? The only times I think about the words do not come, do not come is when I'm doing something completely different, not when I'm thinking about your policies on the border. So really think about it, Kamala. Your words are that much of a, much of a joke that I don't even think about them when I'm thinking about politics. But you know what, Kamala? You're still trying to do a noble thing. You know, you're trying to stand up for women and you know, you're trying to make the most use of identity politics ever. If you're going to try to make some change, Kamala, maybe try to do something different than what good old Joe did, you know? don't say to the migrants do not come because they're really coming and you know they're coming you know on the border and even in the border and they're coming across the border they're coming in every literal sense of the word kamala and i have to say i really wonder what are you going to change like you're just going to make more things worse if you implement the types of capital gains tax that's going to like completely prevent anybody from ever wanting to invest in the stock market it's simple why is it so like complicated for people to try to understand that if you try to put more tariffs or other types of things or you try to constrain different avenues, you know, in which, you know, uh, capital and liquidity can be generated from the stock market, obviously it's going to really put a large drain on the American financial system. And, you know, I really think that if you become, if you really become president for real Kamala, the economy is going to go in the shredder, you know, because all these types of price controls and other types of things, like objectively speaking, it's just going to continue to make it harder. Like, look, even if some companies say they have limited power, <coughs> limited power into the future to be able to look for loans or to acquire loans because of the higher interest rates, you know, it's kind of offset a little bit by higher stock prices or a higher stock evaluation if they can get it. And if the environment continues being this bad with regards to the inflation and the interest rates, even if the Federal Reserve tries to lower them in the upcoming couple of months, it's not really going to make a difference because the, you know, any types of, you know, uh, you know, upshots or any types of positive effects that a big tech company like Google or other types of companies can reap from, you know, 
this higher interest rate environment by maybe continuing to lay people off just to boost their stock price. It's the trade off between that. It's going to continue to get worse. And then it's just going to result in even more layoffs happening at the higher rate than whatever they have now. Like you try to brag about the economy, but look how terrible the economy is. You can even see from my perspective because I applied to around 4,000 jobs and I had more than 50 interviews. Like many interviews, they obviously went beyond the first stage because, you know, I really try to, you know, do my due diligence for the companies I'm applying to and, you know, and talk about like different types of, you know, areas of research that I could do and how it relates to my previous experience. But just like you make so many vacant promises and the people who try to vote for you, like they're obviously just voting because they have more of a similarity with you and your identity, not because of actually anything that you say or any type of policy that you're going to promote or introduce for the United States of America. And I'm just saying, you know, it just really shows if someone like her or someone even more liberal comes along and becomes president, it's going to be you know the country you know the country is obviously going to suffer a lot economically not only that but also they're going to try to implement like more types of things like what they're doing in my state they're trying to allow illegal immigrants to be able to buy a house here when even types of american citizens can't even buy one or can't even afford to buy one or they don't get that type of incentive or handout so it just goes to show you know people have to open their eyes and really think about what's going to actually benefit them from a political candidate being in office like actually probably nothing because first of all whoever's watching this you're the person who's most in charge of your life and you're the person who can make the most change not Kamala and you know even I used to work at this other company and uh, I was one time at this dinner and this professor from uh, Caltech she was there and she was like talking about like oh how they kicked out Trump and everything and it's like okay you know fine you know he lost the election but look who you're trying to put in <laughs> It's like gonna be like make things like so much more worse. And you guys no and you guys who try to vote for her or you will vote for her, it's not gonna you know, you guys aren't gonna understand what's happening until it's too late. Now everyone's saying all these negative things about the Biden presidency and, and it's pretty much like fashionable to talk about how he's old, he's slow, how they didn't cover for him because all the news networks are now talking about it. But think about it this way. What if we're going to get to a point where that type of news or that type of sentiment in the news or even more is going to be propagated about Kamala Harris? I promise you it's going to be even 10 times worse and Joe Biden is going to look like an angel compared to her.